The headquarters of Dulles Limited is in the Mid Wales town of McCuntlet, famous as a centre for green energy research, as it's also the home of the Centre for Alternative Technology. Just over 25 years ago, practically the entire engineering department of the CAT resigned to set up their own company named Dulles after the valley in which McCuntlet sits. It's an employee-owned cooperative. Directors are appointed by popular vote on a 12-month tenure. Ben Robinson is one of the current serving directors. Four people in a shed, pretty much part, um, part of the Centre for Alternative Technology. We were the engineering arm um, where we designed the vaccine fridge. Um, and then the Centre really didn't think that it was going to go that far, so there was a bit of a management buyout. And um, we've been independent for 26 years, it will be this year. Um, and obviously that led us into other renewable energy technologies and different areas and different countries. The original product that was the foundation of the company's growth was a solar-powered refrigerator aimed at developing countries. Originally devised to hold temperature-sensitive medical supplies, it's now been updated and is used widely throughout the world for multiple applications. It was about 25 years ago when there were a few people working for Dulles and we'd had a lot of contacts with Africa and the Middle East and a lot of places where there was no electricity. We realised then that there was a great demand for cooling for medical reasons, so particularly for the vaccines in remote areas. So we came back and tried to develop a fridge, which we did, which was very, very energy efficient, which means that it could run in sunny places with using a small number of solar panels. So that's where it started 25 years ago, and now thousands and thousands of these you know, go throughout the world every year. The secret to the fridge's success is its simplicity. There's an extra thick layer of thermal insulation. Power from the solar panel is stored in a state-of-the-art gel battery. They're a normal fridge, so any fridge engineer will fix anything if there's a problem with the fridge itself. And the other stuff, there's no moving parts, so it's very little to go wrong. The, the, there's a battery and the solar module, so the, the maintenance is very, very low on these uh, as compared to if you have a, a diesel generator or something like that where there are a lot of moving parts and you have to provide the fuel. As Dulles grew, it moved into wind power. It now acts as consultant on some of Britain's biggest wind farm projects. But it hasn't lost sight of the need for smaller scale micro-generation systems for generating power on demand. This cottage in a remote part of central Wales is off-grid. That is, it has no connection to the commercial power lines that crisscross most of the UK. At these latitudes, with short winter days, solar panels alone are not enough to meet the electrical needs of a busy household. But by combining photovoltaics with a small wind turbine, Dulles has provided the best of both worlds. This is an off-grid system, so it runs off batteries. It's a hybrid system, so it's got a wind turbine and solar pho photovoltaics, or PV system, which really complement each other. So when the wind is blowing, the wind turbine will provide you electricity, and when the sun's shining, the PV will provide you electricity. The direct current generated by the system is fed to a bank of specialist batteries that act as storage. It's then converted to standard 220 volts alternating current by an inverter, which means any equipment from TVs to hair dryers can be run on the system without modification, completely independently of the national grid. Wales has many free-running rivers fed by its high rainfall, and another branch of Villa specialises in converting the power contained within these rushing waters to electricity without the need for dams. Matt Palmer is the company's senior hydro engineer. Dulles builds and installs water intake devices that extract a steady flow of water from the stream using a special curved grid that filters out debris while at the same time using a clever trick of nature called the Coander effect to push water into the intake pipe. This is one of our uh, Coander screen intakes. Uh, we built it about five years ago, something like that. Um, the type of screen we use is, is quite specialised. It's based on a screen that was developed in the coal and mining industries and sewage treatment as well. But we've, uh, it's been adapted to, um, to increase the capacity for water intakes. Um, it's made out of very fine wedge wires. They're only um, 
about two millimetres across with a one millimetre spacing and they are silted very slightly, a bit like a cheese grater and the water flows over those and gets sheared through and also sticks to the surface like a dribbling teapot and that's the Coanda effect. The Dulles Coanda intake screens have proved very popular around the world and have been installed in Nepal and India besides many developing countries in keeping with the company's humanitarian and ethical philosophy. Further downstream, the intake pipe terminates at the powerhouse, which contains the actual electrical generator. Designed by Dulles to run automatically for long periods, it's monitored remotely by sensors connected to a computer, which can be checked by engineers 24 hours a day from anywhere in the world. Because there's a reliable flow of water through the intake pipe, there's no need to dam the river as in larger schemes. We call them run of river. There's no dam, there's, a, there's an intake and then a long pipeline generally. Uh, we're making use of the, of the height drop um, between the intake and the powerhouse. In this case, it's about 70 metres. An average 600 litres a second runs through the turbine, producing about 700 megawatt hours annually. The system's been running since 2003. Well, this turbine is about 300 kilowatts uh, and it goes directly, the, the power goes directly into the, the grid. Uh, we sell the power, but it's probably enough to, to power the local village, all the farms and so on. Back at Dulles headquarters in McCutliffe, staff gather for a communal lunch. From the group of four in a shed 26 years ago, Dulles has grown into a major business employing around 50 full-time staff. But there are differing views about how the company should progress. Some of us are very ambitious, some of us would like to see uh, Dulles shops on every street corner um, implementing our ethical way of working as well as the renewable energy technologies that we like to install um, and others, you know, like the, the small niche markets that we're in. But uh, I think, you know, we can probably tick all of those boxes if we work together towards a common goal. The lake at Nanti Arian is a sanctuary for the red kite, a protected bird of prey that was almost extinct in Wales just a few years ago. Now their numbers are increasing and a special visitors and interpretations centre has been built on the edge of the lake to allow visitors to see the birds in their natural habitat. Here Dulles has installed the latest technology for burning wood chips. The chips are kept in a weather sealed bunker and fed into the furnace on demand. Wood fuel is carbon neutral if it's taken from a sustainable source. More often than not, it's uh, wood fuel is a byproduct or a waste product of either the sawmill or the uh, timber industry. The benefits are it's good for the environment, it's a cheap fuel, and it's very good for the local economy. The system provides all-round temperature control for the centre itself, but unlike traditional wood-fired burners, it does not emit large amounts of toxins into the atmosphere or unburned wood in the shape of ash and grit. The system only runs when the temperature of water stored in insulated holding tanks falls below a preset level. The boiler self-ignites and chips are fed from the bunker by an Archimedes screw. The burning process is so efficient, only a small amount of ash is created and there are no visible emissions from the chimney. Wood is the oldest form of heat. We've uh, heated and cooked with it for uh, centuries. Uh, the last couple of decades, the, uh, in Europe, they've been developing the biomass technology. So it's now over 90% efficient to heat using wood. Whereas if you use a fireplace, most of it goes up the chimney. Or a best case with a, uh, a wood stove, you may be looking at 70 to 80% and, require, and it requires it to be manually stoked to get optimum combustion. These systems do that all automatically. Dulles is growing faster today than it has at any stage of its history. It still holds 75% of the world's market for solar-powered medical refrigerators and it's now on the brink of some major contracts. I can see possibly satellite offices, um, agents, we already have agents in, in various countries. Um, as the markets develop in those developing countries then yes we would probably need to, to look at employing local people. So. Uh, I am quite ambitious for the company, so yes, I believe and I hope to see uh, the Dillis brand all across the world. The future looks bright for this Welsh company that has outperformed even the greatest expectations of its four founders over a quarter of a century ago. With hydro, wind, biomass and solar energy already mastered, it's now hoping to develop new energy-saving products, perhaps even electric vehicles.